Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the all new Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. And in this video, I'm gonna take a quick speed date of this one, show you around the inside, the outside and take it for a quick drive. Stay tuned. All right, gearheads, I am coming to you from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin at Road America for the 2023 Midwest Automotive Media Association or MAMA Spring Rally, where Toyota has graciously brought this. And yes, you do hear squealing of motocross happening back behind me, but I'm, I'm driving this right now. You can actually hear the engine is on right now, which, uh, Perfect segue, I've got the hood propped up with the prop rod. We can talk about what powers this beast. So what makes this different from the typical Corolla Cross is the fact that this one is actually a hybrid and uses a two liter dynamic force four cylinder engine uh, making 196 combined horsepower with that electric motor and 139 pound feet of torque. The overall fuel economy rating of this one is 45 city, 38 highway, 42 combined. So this really is a fuel sipper. And like I said, the vehicle is on. There it goes. Every once in a while, it'll kick on for the AC compressor or to charge that battery up. So you can see this is using the gas engine as little as possible. I've been out here filming and taking pictures and this is the second time I believe that this one has actually triggered that gas engine to come on. But let's close the hood and take a look at the styling of this. I've got the hood closed and there the gas engine just turned off. But wanting to call out what separates this from the typical Corolla Cross, it is very evident up here in the front in the grill. There's the AC compressor right there, keeping the cabin cool for me. But yes, the grill of this one is different than the typical Corolla Cross, where the normal one got a little more of a Fu Manchu grill. This one still gets it with that lower portion, but this upper portion is different and signifies the uh, hybrid model versus the standard version. So we did a test a non-hybrid version a year or so ago. So I'll go ahead and link that video uh, up in the corner if you are watching this on YouTube. But that is a little bit different uh, styling up front from the traditional gas powered one. Otherwise, it is very similar to the other Corolla Cross. And I will say, after spending some time in the GR Corolla and at riding up here to this event in a Corolla hatchback, I am feeling a lot of Corolla vibes, more so on the inside than I am on the outside. So we will definitely get to that here in a little bit. But Toyota really wants you to know that this is a Corolla Cross. I've hidden it in a lot of creative and interesting areas. It is right here on the headlight unit. And then coming around to the side, we do get an all wheel drive badge just in front of that rear wheel. Very nice styling overall. I like the floating black roof contrasting this blue paint and all the black accents on this one. It looks really sharp, really stands out. And the separating piece between the black roof and the body style also says Toyota or Corolla Cross on it. And this is actually a metallic black, so it's not just your uh, standard black paint. We get another Corolla Cross here on the taillight as well. So if you don't know what you're driving, well, that, that one's on you. Coming around to the back, very nice styling, very small hatchback. And we also get a Corolla Cross here on the hatch and on the rear bumper. Opening up the rear hatch, this is where I feel that this is at absolutely hands down uh, the option to get if you are a fan of the Corolla platform and the Corolla price point but need more storage that uh, Corolla uh, GR Corolla that we tested had the battery back in the back with the big foam platform I thought that foam platform was unique to GR Corolla so if you watch that video go ahead and uh, call me out on that because now driving around in the traditional Corolla hatch I've noticed they still have that platform back in the back, but the spare tire is underneath there. Here we get tons more cargo space uh, because of the crossover platform of this vehicle. And you can see we get our JBL subwoofer back there. 
We do, instead of the hard parcel shelf and the curl hatch, we get a roller shade back here. So all around, it's just a little bit nicer, a little bit roomier. And talking about foam platforms, there you've got all your fix-a-flat stuff for uh, the Corolla Cross right there. It is a manual opening and closing hatch. So there, that is a, a sacrifice you have to make for this uh, platform, this uh, smaller overall and more affordable vehicle. But I'm gonna go ahead and pop inside, get away from all the motocross noise and show you, yes, the family uh, lineage to Corolla proper in here is very evident. All of the IP is taken directly out of uh, Corolla proper. I mean, even this section right here with this large cutout on the dash, right out of Corolla proper. So typically I'm not one to, you know, just stick cross on a name and make a crossover out of it. But here it works because that's exactly what this feels like. And I mean, even the material choices in here, everything feels very much like the Corolla, just a little bit bigger, same steering wheel and all that good stuff. Infotainment's the same. I, I won't go into a lot of detail. You can go see our GR Corolla video for that. We do get a USB-C port up here. It is a little bit different coming down here because of the larger overall size of this vehicle, the more uprightness to it. So the USB-C is a little less hidden. The Qi wireless charger goes back instead of being crossways. And I am not seeing heated seats up here like I do in our current uh, ride to this event in our standard X, I believe it's a XSE uh, Corolla hatch, but there is that. I will call out these seats. They are very nice. They're very comfortable. They are cloth covered with a lot of blue accents. So if you know Toyota, you know blue is their hybrid color of choice. And we have a standard sunroof up here. We do have those roof, round, roof mounted crossbars up here. I will call out this is a pre-production prototype vehicle. So there are some things that could still change on this as well as some of the final numbers of what I've quoted you with power and fuel economy. But overall it is a very nice uh, cabin up here. And then you get a mechanical uh, gear selector here. When you put it in reverse, you do get a rather grainy image back here. It does the job. It fills the screen very nicely. I'm not gonna complain too much about it. I will say the Toyota scene and we had felt like it had a much worse backup camera. We are in EV mode right now. You can see that green light in the dash. So uh, I do have a backup sound playing to let pedestrians know that I had this in reverse. And coming around to me, you can see I've got plenty of room in here, more headroom than standard Corolla. I feel more comfortable than the typical Corolla. I have a more chair-like seating position. All around, it is more upright and more of that crossover flare that people are looking for in this segment. Popping out, even the doors look like Corolla. I mean, this very much is, unashamedly so, a much bigger Corolla. Coming back to the back, I'm gonna sit behind myself at 510. We'll see what the back seat is like. It is a little bit tighter. Uh, I was in Chevy Trax earlier at this event and the Chevy Trax does have a much more roomy back seat. And uh, I, I would go more for the Chevy Trax for its rear seat space, but the fuel economy on this hybrid version is definitely top notch. And then we do get air vents back here in the back. So again, that's something uh, Chevy Trax didn't get. So a few things back here that are nice up upgrades or amenities versus some of the competition. You can see cup holders in the door pockets right there, more blue accents on the seat here. And then headroom, it's a little bit tighter, but as you go to the center of the vehicle, there's a, a nice pitch up. So as long as you're not like sitting out here, you've got plenty of good headroom. And overall, it is a very nice back seat, but why don't we hop back behind the driver's seat and see how this thing drives overall. All right, setting off in the Corolla Cross all-wheel drive. I will go ahead and say that this gear selector is tied to a continuously variable transmission. So that's something I will definitely be paying attention to when we get outside of this Road America complex here. Going back to the powertrain, Toyota does hybrids very well. Uh, more and more of their lineup is becoming 
either optionally a hybrid or only a hybrid. So new Sequoia, you can only get as a hybrid. The new um, Toyota Tundra, you can get as a hybrid. New Tacoma now comes as a hybrid. So uh, the Vinza is hybrid only. Prius, oh my goodness, Prius has seen a major update to its style over the years, but it is like the leader of the hybrids. And then our favorite hybrid powertrain so far uh, overall from Toyota as a family was the Toyota Sienna I referenced earlier. Also only a hybrid and uh, very interesting. The same application has been applied here. Small engine uh, with that electronic all-wheel drive. This so far just driving around the complex has been completely fine. I will say when the engine does fire up sometimes it feels very eager to rev and may feel a little disconnected from the overall driving experience. It'll be interesting to see. I'm just going to take it on a short drive because this really is a speed date of sorts. Uh, I'm away from home. I don't have all of my usual drive routes or my luggage to load or Tucker to put in the back seat, things like that. So if you want to see more from a Corolla Cross Hybrid, absolutely let me know. And when these start showing up in our fleet, I will reach out to Toyota and get one if that is something that you want to see. But let's set off here. See, the engine likes to rev. I mean, it's not horrible, but the kind of disconnect with that, it, that engine revving, it, it's a little bit jarring. Otherwise, it's a very smooth, very easy to accelerate vehicle. No major complaints right there. The CVT is not the wet blanket that it could be to this overall driving experience. Uh, the railroad tracks we just went over, very nice, well composed over it. So the ride is very good in this. You sit up a little bit higher than a typical Corolla. I already told you, I feel like I am more in a chair than being in a car sitting directly on the floor but we're actually going to test out some rough pavement up here and see how this thing does when things get not so great underneath uh, the vehicle yeah that that engine really likes to rev make some noise it is a little coarse i did mention it is a two liter four cylinder so just something to note uh, if you push it a little it's going to get a little noisy but it's not unbearable, not unlivable. You do get an EV mode button down here, as well as a drive mode switch. So you can put it in eco, oh, you can put it in EV. You can turn that engine off completely, but when the vehicle needs it, it's gonna come back on. So that EV mode is really more suggesting to the vehicle, hey, I would rather not use gas power right now. And as long as you're light on the throttle, you'll get it. We're on rougher pavement now. You can feel it. There's there's some jiggle to it, but it, it is not rough. It is not upsetting. Uh, it, this is not a Rolls Royce, we'll say that, but it rides over it quite well. It, it is not a terrible riding vehicle. We are riding on Michelin Primacy tires. Uh, I did not pull in tight on those, but these are uh, pretty good tires. I've tried some Michelin premises on other vehicles. I've had no real complaints on them. And this being an all-wheel drive, there's a little bit of soft roading component to it. I'm sure people would uh, take these out on dirt trails and stuff or on some mountain passes maybe to get to a cabin retreat for a weekend or something like that. That's where my family would probably most use uh, a crossovers off-road functions in our day-to-day -day life. But let's see what this thing is like under acceleration. I will say we're at nearly a full tank of gas, 350 miles of range, but full stop, pedal down. It's reasonably quick. I'm surprised. 60. Not a bad acceleration. It It is noisy. I, I will keep bringing that up. The engine is a little noisy, but if you could get past that, if you've got your music blaring, that really won't be an issue. 
other than that, it's really calm, composed. It's what you would expect if the Corolla turned into a crossover. I will say coming back into the Road America complex, we are limited to a 15 mile per hour speed limit where the EV mode of this thing absolutely shines. And that's where you'll hear that electric whir of the electric motors because it doesn't make a lot of noise. Otherwise, it's very calm, it's very quiet, very juxtaposed to when that engine decides it wants to kick on. But in EV mode, this is really nice. It does drive around at low speeds, more like an EV, using that electric motor to help you get set off from a stop. And it, it is a nice, smooth transition um, until, you know, loud gas motor under the hood. And with that, I will say, if you want to see more from us, go find us at gtgaragetalk.com where you can read more of the details and specs on this vehicle that I could not remember off the top of my head. And you can also check out various different other things we've tested and driven. You can find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, everything at GT Garage Talk. And give us a like, follow, subscribe, ring the bell, comment, whatever you have to do to let the algorithms know to show you more content from us. But as for me, at the Mama Spring 2023 rally behind the wheel of the Toyota Corolla Cross, until next time, gearheads, bye.